Welcome to another Liquid Bullet Productions. Um, with us today is a guy I've been following, and um, I think he's just a huge inspiration. People make excuses about what they can't do, this and that. This man solves problems. He finds a way. So uh, Jake Peacock is with us today. So welcome, Jake. Thanks for coming. Thanks for, Thanks for having me on, guys. It's a pleasure. Yeah, fantastic. Jake, can we just start with a bit of your background, like a bit of your upbringing and stuff? Yeah, sure. So I was born in Newcastle. Um, my dad was playing for Newcastle United at the time. Uh, then he signed to Chelsea, so we moved back down to London area, South London. I grew up in Bexley. Um, around like seven years old, my mum put me in martial arts just for some extracurricular activity and some self-defence. Now, growing up in London, you had to know how to handle yourself sometimes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I did that and I took a, took a good life into it real quick. Um, I played lots of different what, growing up, but what was the what was the first martial arts you took up? It was sport karate. Sport karate, so, yeah. Contact sport karate, very fast in and out. They break it when the point's been scored, right? Yeah. What what style was that? Uh, Wado, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Under under Sensei Steve Groom, so he was my first ever coach and great, fantastic guy. He's still coaching today. Um, but yeah, so I did that for a bit. Um, then I went to school in inner London. Um, and finished off my school there before I moved to Canada. And when I moved to Canada, I finished off university and, and high school and uh, got a degree and then I opened up a gym. And here I am with a, a business gym and a professional fighter as well. Yes, great. So soon can just start. So was you born with your arm like that? Yeah, I was born like that. Uh, yeah. the, the band from the amniotic sack got wrapped around it when it was developing and it just stopped yeah. it from growing. And, and how have you, how did you, obviously, from where you are now, it doesn't seem like you've had a problem with it at all. It hasn't caused you, no, hasn't I, set I, you yeah. back, hasn't stopped you, has it? It's, yeah. You know, you, you, what many, you're achieving is more than what any, any other person normally does, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, right. so, I don't know. Yeah, I've never found any issues. I just get on with it. My parents always just let me get on with it too. Um, they never really said, oh, we can't do this or can't do that. They just threw me into stuff. Uh, and I, I usually just got on with it and found a way. So I don't think so, I, I actually can't think of any time I've, I've come across something that I haven't been able to do. Um, whether it's like, you know, tying a shoe to skiing to, well, fighting professionally, like there's not really been anything so far that I've ever found. No, it's good. I, I, do you find that so mentally, though? Because um, some people even have a little injury and then, oh, I can't do that anymore. I've got to train, I can't do this. 100%, mate. It's all mental. It's all mental. And yeah. I feel bad for people that maybe have, like, you know, less confidence, you know, less courage to try things because that does hold you back when you could be achieving so much more physically, mentally, you know, 100%. It's, it's, it's 90% mental, I'd say. So, so just going back to when you first started the martial arts, did you compete in the karate or just, uh, yeah, just training? Yeah. You did. I started competing at like 10 or 11 years old uh, in England. Um, and, uh, and then I kind of wanted a little bit more. Like it, it, was, it was great and I did well in it, um, but I wanted something more contact. So I started doing some Muay Thai training and boxing training but then I got into Kyokushin Karate, which is like the next yeah. level. I don't know if you know Kyokushin. The knockdown, karate. yeah, knockdown Karate, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. You know, Dolph, Dolph Lundgren was uh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it made me hard. It made me really hard. And I, I actually traveled around the world competing. I went to Tokyo, went around the States, around Canada, and I did really well in that. Uh, and then I just wanted something even more. So I continued training in Muay Thai and boxing, and, uh, and then I started competing in, in Muay Thai. Um, and then here we are today. So, so when was your first uh, Muay Thai fight? Oh, I don't know. It must have been like 19, maybe. And, and how, do, how, how do you find with the Thai boxing? Because obviously the clinch work and stuff. How do you get on with that? Yeah, fine. I mean, this. I feel like my arm actually suits me well for Muay Thai. There's so many different ranges in Muay Thai. You know, you've got your, your long range, your, your legs shorter range maybe like your punches and knees then you're in close you've got the clinch and you've got elbows my right arm just suits me perfect for that um, yeah 
funny enough, because the next guy I'm fighting, he's a big clincher. All he does is make you fall asleep watching his fights. He just grabs you and hugs you <laughs> five rounds. And he's going to do that to me, I'm assuming. So we'll see. He's a, and I respect him. He's a great clincher. Like, he'll be tough. But um, I don't think he expects to, to see what he's going to see from me in the clinch. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did every family opponent, um, not being disrespectful to your opponents, but it, it must feel like um, more of a, a defeat to be beaten by you, if you know what I mean. Because you're going in there with, like, Muay Thai is the, the art of eight limbs. You're using seven and you're still beating people. So to them, that must, you know, it's great for you. You're showing off a fantastic achievement. But for them, they must feel very, you know, What's the word for it? Sort of downhearted, if you like. Sure. So they're going, they're going in with an extra, an extra, a skill over you, an extra part over you, and um, you're still beating them. So. Yeah, I've heard it a couple of times. Like people have said, "Oh, it's a lose lose." You know, you, you either lose to a guy with one hand, or you beat a guy with one hand. Technically, you still lose because it doesn't look good. But at the end of the day, I've proved myself against countless competition. I've had over 80 uh, karate fights, uh, mm. seven Muay Thai fights. Um, I'm 4-0 professionally, all KOs. These guys are coming out hard to, to try and take me out, and they're getting taken out. So, you know, if anyone does say that, and they will in the future, like it happened not too long ago, if anyone does say that, then that's on them. Like, it's, it's nothing to do with me. It's all them. They're just... <laughs> They're just maybe a little bit, they just don't want it. I don't know. But I don't how, think how do you post enough excuse? How, I, I noticed in your fights, you know, there, there's no holding back. People are coming at you, you know, they're coming for the win, aren't they? You know, then it's not like, a, you know, like an exhibition fight. They're, they're coming at you for real. This is as real as it's going to get. So yeah. I, I think it's great to be watching you. Really good. I really yeah. enjoy it. Um, so just going, regarding your training, obviously, I had a martial art background myself. Um, obviously, my guard wasn't very good, and I was always getting punched in the face. So how, how, do, you, how do you work around that? Yeah, you the guard you know, situation? Your nose is a little bit to the side like mine. Yeah, I've, I've, I've taken a few good ones, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what's your question, sorry? So regarding your guard, do you have a formula for that, for working around that? Or? I, keep, I use this like it's my hand. So I keep it up. Yeah. It, it leaves my body exposed. But hey, there's a there's a hundred dollar bet in the gym. If you can drop me with a body shot on sparring days, you get a hundred dollars cash straight up. And no one's going <laughs> to do that. Well, I haven't been dropped That's somebody funny. in a long, long time. So uh, yeah, my body's a little bit more exposed, but I find ways to to block it um, and get out the way. Uh, but I just have a a regular guard, whether I stand southpaw, this hand's leading, or stand orthodox, my left hand's leading. I, I noticed as well, you sort of swap stances quite a bit, don't you? So you yeah. fight from both legs. Yeah, I try to do that. Orthodox. You know, I have my reach with my left, so I like to stand orthodox, but then also this has got some good power on it, so I, I stand southpaw as well. Yeah. Is that something you've always done, train both sides or always, just always? Sort of, yeah. always yeah. Just came naturally, really. I don't even, I didn't even don't think that. when I started doing that. Would have been yeah, just, a, lot, a lot of fighters only ever fight on one side, don't they? You don't yeah. get many fighters that fight off both sides. Yeah. Yeah. So even that, that alone must confuse your opponents because, yeah. you know, they, they're setting up to fight either an orthodox or regular fighter, aren't they? So right. if you to switch it in a fight, he's probably probably quite a mind game for them. For sure, I agree with you there, yeah. Yeah. What um, what weight is it you fight at, Jake? I fight anywhere from, I've said I'd go down to as low as 142, um, but I'll fight anywhere from like 145 to 150-ish. This next fight's at 150 plus a pound, so 151. But generally, I'm a, I'm a 147 pound fighter. So, so do you have to make weights like cut weight to get into your fights? Or? Yeah, I, do, I do a little bit of a cut. Yeah. It's nothing crazy, but I have an amazing nutrition guy. His name's uh, TJ Whelan, and he's just absolutely phenomenal. He's worked with some of the biggest names in, in MMA. Um, and uh, and obviously, I do huge cuts, right? Like yeah. massive, massive cuts. Yeah. But for, for him uh, working with me, it's easy. 
and he'll fly out actually to all my events and he uh he helps me cut weight and then he helps me rehydrate properly which is just crucial and he does everything in the right steps very scientific so scientific when he talks to me i have no idea what he's saying i just mm-hmm. i nod along like this i'm like i right, cut to the t- chase tj like give me simple simple but uh he comes and he cooks all my meals in the hotel room oh, really? so he brings, like he brings all the food spices <laughs> frying pans you should see a hotel room. It's just like every... It sounds every, like you're getting pampered there, mate. Oh, seriously. <laughs> he's, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. But, uh, yeah, so he helps me cut weight great. I've never had an issue. I always weigh in 0.5 under or just just on on, on weight. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had to um, not sauna and sweat out the, sweat out the weight? I sat in the sauna, for, but nothing drastic. Like, nothing usually, drastic. Like, DJ just has me sit in a hot bath for half hour and I'll be on weight. Sometimes I just wake yeah. up and pee it out. Well, what's your, uh, can I just ask your opinion on um, the people that cut weight and have to sweat it out in a sauna? Because you know, it can be dangerous, can't it? And can a couple be. of fighters have died through that. What, what's your views on that? I think if, you, if you're if you doing it correctly and you're rehydrating properly and you're, you're aware of how much you're cutting and how you're leading up to it, um, I think it's safe. But yeah, you have to be, you can't just be an idiot and just sit in a sauna mm. till you make weight. It's just not going to happen like that. Like I'll tell you this, t- TJ, uh, maybe I cut, let's just say I cut 10 pounds. TJ will have me eating and drinking four or five meals the day before weigh-ins. And you're probably like, how, how are you able to eat the day before weigh-ins? Like some guys starve themselves for three days. Yeah, for a couple of days before. It doesn't have to be that way. If you if you do it scientifically and not just the meathead way, there's a, there's a good way of doing it. So you just got to find the right people that can help you do it. Yeah, Jake. Have you had any um like? Is there anyone you followed during your fight career? Sort of names that have inspired you? Uh, like Muay Thai fighters. Yeah, Muay Thai or MMA or, or any boxing. What sort of yeah. people would have encouraged you or yeah. have enjoyed to follow and stuff? Obviously, the all-time great Muhammad Ali. Love Muhammad. Yeah, Ali. yeah, yeah. But there's many, many boxers that I've loved, and I watch a lot of different different boxers, uh, different styles um and things that they did really well but as far as my tie fighters fabio pinka love fabio pinka taking a few different things from him um and then a couple other kickboxers but uh i try and like you know petrosian's another great one i try and just have a, a a wide view of all these fighters and and take some good parts from each of them um raymond decker's a legend you know love his yeah, yeah. Uh, um there's 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 so many countless too many too many to name but take little parts of everyone and try and mold it into yourself as bruce lee said that's my fight nickname is lee <laughs> someone gave me the name uh jake lee because i look like bruce lee my body when i was really skinny when i was younger so it just <laughs> cut and they call me jake lee now so like bruce lee said he's different parts of, of different sports and combines them into the most effective way that's what you got to do in a fight really yeah um, could I just ask you a little bit as well? Obviously, I saw on your Instagram, it, you're actually um, coaching, holding pads and stuff. So can you tell us a little bit about your coaching as well? Yeah, sure. I, well, I started training people a few years ago now, maybe like, I don't even know, eight years ago, something like that, nine years ago. And then it, it ended up picking up quite a bit. So I said to my wife, do you think we should open up a gym? And uh, we ended up just going for it, quit our full-time jobs, opened up a gym, and it's just grown exponentially. We've been really blessed. And uh, the gym is just home to a good amount of people now. Um, fighters included. We have some good national and international fighters, uh, MMA and uh, Muay Thai and kickboxing. So, yeah, it's been really successful in that way. So, is your own, your own gym you're running now? Correct, what, yeah. What's the name of that, Jake? It's Dunamis. Dunamis. Dunamis, yeah. It means power, strength, ability in, uh, in Greek. Uh, nice. Well, where do you see yourself sort of in five to ten years' time? Do you think you're still going to be competing or do you think you're going to go more into the coaching side of stuff? Yeah, I don't really know. I'm just playing things by ear. I'm not looking yeah. to fight for a long, long time. Uh, I never have been. When I when I went pro, I, I, I made the decision I'm not going to fight forever. You know, like you see these guys retiring, come out of retirement, they do that 20 times. Yeah. You're not fighting until they're like 45. It's yeah. just maybe it's for some people, it's not for me. Um, but I'm going to make a run. I'm going to make a tear. Even if I get some setbacks, we'll see what, what doors open up. Uh, if family life permits me still fighting, then great. But 
I fight because I've been blessed with the skill to fight, but fighting is not my life. So if I didn't, you know, if I got injured or if I life didn't permit me fighting, that's fine. Or you know, I'm, I'm living for more than that. Yeah. Just just going on to what you said there about fighters coming back, you know, come out of retirement, fight again. What's your opinion on that? Because a lot of them make themselves you know, they're a good name for themselves, and they just keep coming back in for these losses, don't they? What's your views on that? Honestly, I think people are struggling. They struggle to find their identity outside of sport. Mm. You know, if you're a legend in, let's just say you're a legend in, in MMA, and you make it to the top, then you say you're retiring, and and then you, you go home and you're like, oh, what have I got to live for now? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then, you know, a lot of athletes, you know, my dad told me, like, a lot of athletes he played with, legends, they just resorted to drugs, alcohol, their life just went down the toilet after because they, they 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 only ever lived for sport and, and they were great at it. But if you only ever live for sport and you don't live for something greater than that, I think you'll struggle. And that's why people, you know, hop in and out of retirement 20 times. Yeah. I suppose you've, they've taken away their highlight of their life, haven't they? Removed that element from their life and right. can't find a replacement for it. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, oh, sorry, mate, I lost my bearings here. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so it, um, I saw an <laughs> MMA fight you had. So have you got in Danny MMA track as well? Uh, well, a lot of the MMA guys like to come to me because our striking is really good. Um, yeah. So they just use it for the striking. Uh, we don't have any ground stuff. We, we team up with a, a gym across the road, Kodakan, run by Randy Chung, uh, a great professor in, in jiu-jitsu. And he will help my MMA guys with their ground game. And then I just look after their striking and, and oh, oversee their general career and stuff. Yeah. So you, you actually had an MMA fight yourself, haven't you? I saw. I have a few MMA fighters. Oh, had a few me, oh, MMA fight myself, sorry. Yeah. Like I, yeah. yeah, I did have one MMA fight, yeah, a few years back. Yeah. Sorry, I, I missed your question. That's right. No worries. How, how did you find that? Uh, um, did you prepare for that? Did you train in all elements? Right. Like, yeah. Jiu -jitsu? Uh, you know, I dabbled in jiu-jitsu for a bit. Um, back in the day and what happened was like I said like when was it like seven eight years ago I started uh, training a lot of people and I started training predominantly MMA fighters um, and then I'm like at this point I wasn't fighting I had taken a break in my amateur career from fighting and uh, I'm training a lot of MMA fighters so I got the itch again it's like when you get out of retirement <laughs> you're out of retirement and you want to come out and I'm like oh man I should I should take a fight and uh, I just took an MMA fight and I trained, I trained for it, and uh, you know, I did the, did I put the work in? Um, but the the guy, the guy caught me sloppy, caught my leg, took me down. Uh, big guy stayed on top of me and uh, elbowed me from the bottom. Um, and he won the fight, uh, but it was a fun experience. I mean, I, I wouldn't fight MMA again. It was just a one nah. thing. Um, just, nah. uh, just itching. Good to have the experience, the though. Something else. Fight. Yeah, I'd rather take a professional boxing fight at some point in the yeah. future. Is that, is that something you want to do, yeah? Yeah, that would be something I would do for sure, yeah. yeah good. Um, is there any, any funny stories you've got for us you can tell us? <laughs> you've been training or fighting or...? <laughs> oh, I, I lost my wife. <laughs> A lot of funny stuff happens to you, that's for sure. <laughs> I've got some great stories. <laughs> I wish you'd ask. I wish you'd ask. Sent it to me earlier. I would have come up with some good ones. <laughs> I've good stories, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Nah, that's all right, mate. No problem. Um, is, there, is there anything else you want to go over, Jake? Is there anything that sort of sponsors the stuff you want to bring up and talk about with yeah, us? Sure. I'm sponsored by ATP Lab Supplements. They're another part, a huge part to my camp uh, and, and my weight cut and rehydration. Um, they keep me fueled, uh, really, really clean, healthy supplements. You can order them worldwide. They're based out in Canada, in Quebec. Um, they're just fantastic, top notch, and they've been supporting me now for a whole year. So I'm very, very grateful for ATP Lab supplements. Um, and then obviously my team at Dynamis, uh, great support system there. My family, my wife, my newborn son, he's just over there lying down. He was How old is he now? He's a month and a week now. So All right, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have a lot, a lot of people in my life that support me, and uh, and uh, it's been great. So, 
Yeah. I, I, I see you was training with um, Steve Gladstone for a while as well. Yes. And the same thing, Jim? Yes, yes, yes. He was my first Muay Thai coach. Oh, was he? I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when I went... Nice I guy. Back, I like Steve. He's a very nice guy. I came back to fight in Ireland last year, um, and I popped back to London the week leading up to the fight, and I, I got some work in with Steve and hadn't seen him in, like, 11 years or something. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw a video on, um, I think it was on YouTube, and um, Steve was saying, you know, he threw some press-ups at you or to class, and he turned around, and you... Basically, you'd found a way of doing them. You just yeah. on the, the ring, the rope of the ring, yeah. to support yourself. And it's, it's just amazing, really. So how many people would say, oh, I can't do this because of that, or make excuses? And well, I, I thought it was really inspiring that you just solve a problem. You say something that you can't do, you'll find a way of doing it, which is yeah. quite amazing, really. Got to find a way. So, Jake, can we just ask you what your daily routine's like at the moment? Yeah, sure. So... Uh, I obviously run the gym full time. Um, so I, either I'm training private clients and I've got classes midday and in the evening, but it actually allows me for a very flexible schedule to train, uh, you know, a couple times a day. So I usually train in the morning, do a run or something in the afternoon and then train in the evening. Um, and I'll do that six days a week. I take Sundays off. Um, and my, my week just consists of, we do, we do 20 minimum of 20 rounds sparring a week uh, at my gym 10 rounds more technical and, and lighter pace, but uh, high volume. And then the, the, the next 10 on Saturdays, we, we took it from Mike's gym, meat day. We call it oh, meat day because fresh meat's coming in and we're, we're chopping it up. So it's a, it's a, tough, it's a tough Saturday. Um, but I've got a great group of guys that, uh, that train at the gym and solid, solid top class athletes. So thankful for that. So is, is your wife involved in a Muay Thai with you as well? Yeah, she helps run the gym with me. Um, she does a yeah. lot of uh, the background stuff, huge amount. She also coaches classes now, and she's a, she's a great athlete herself. She played volleyball and basketball growing up uh, and lots of other different sports. But she's actually, if you watched her Muay Thai, you'd think this, this girl's got, you know, 50 professional fights under her belt. Um, and she, she'll, she'll knock the guys about. Like, she's, she's no joke. So what is your preparation coming up to a fight, Jake? Sure. I, I obviously look at my opponent, um, just have a, have a general look at him, see what they like to do. Are they a big clincher? Are they fight on the outside and kickbox? You know, what, what are their general patterns that they have? Um, and then I just make a general plan going into it. Obviously, everyone can have a game plan, as Mike Tyson says, until they get punched in the face. So yeah. you can't go in there with, like, this blueprint of how it's going to work. In my opinion, as a coach as well, I don't tell fighters, this is how it's going to work. You have to adapt. You have to evolve. You have to change things up in the moment. So I, you know, I give it 110% in my training uh, every day. I never skip anything. Um, I make sure I get the work in. I make sure I push myself physically and mentally. Uh, and I will show up in the ring the most prepared um, out of the two fighters, myself and the other guy. I will be most prepared and uh, we'll look to get the finish every time. Do, do you do, do you um, look at your opponent and watch some previous fights and stuff like that? Yeah, just a couple, like I said, just to yeah. see the odd pattern that he has. Maybe, you know, he likes the left head kick. Maybe he likes the leg kick, whatever it is. Maybe he likes to box. Then I make a general plan just going around that. But nothing set in the stone. I, I just adapt in the moment too. Yeah. So how have your family found like you fighting in the martial arts stuff? Yeah, well, obviously... They've enjoyed, do you enjoyed it? Or are they more worried about you getting involved in it? Or? No, I don't think so. I mean, my, you know, my, my family's very athletic. Uh, my granddad yeah. played 500 games for Charleston Athletic. Uh, my dad played, you know, for many different teams. Um, and so they're both professional athletes. They like the competitive nature. Um, so it's good, yeah. They, they support me big time. Yeah, I know some, sometimes parents are worried about sort of full contact sports aren't they yeah as, yeah. as a sort of protective over their children yeah 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 it's not too bad with mine <laughs> so to what other what other daily things do you do in your in your time apart from my type do you have um, any other activities you're involved in my family's big so i i literally i just go to the gym and when i'm home i'm home and i'm home with my family um my wife krista my newborn my child charlie and uh, and then my extended family as well, and 
yeah, we're pretty much, I don't do too much actually. I have church on Sundays. <laughs> Uh, and then once a week, there's a, a once every other week, I have a Bible study. Um, I go to that. Outside of that, mate, I don't really have a life outside of that. That's my life. <laughs> I'm at the, uh, the gym training or training people and uh, at church. Yeah, full on. That, so that is your church, basically, <laughs> the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you also do some weight training? I saw some photos of you. Yeah, I do a bit of weight, weight training. training. Just yeah. To, yeah, just to keep some strength there. I run through a few different like strength programs, usually at the right at the beginning of camp. Um, actually, I put on a, quite a bit of weight, just the muscle for this last, this next fight coming up, because it's up in weight a little bit. But uh, I'm not a big, big lifter. Is it, is it more sort of strength you're doing it for rather than obviously size and stuff? All strength, yeah, all strength based, yeah. Yeah. Do you ever do like strength and conditioning classes as well? Yeah, we do do a couple here and there. Yeah. And, Definitely for my private clients who do do stuff like that. So, Jake, was you naturally left-handed? Uh, I actually wasn't. They did some tests on me when I was born uh, and as I was developing and, and growing up, and I was I was meant to be right-handed. Um, so I have to like they they explained it like the left side of my brain starts working like if I'm going to write something, the left side of my brain starts working, realize that it, it can't write that side, so then it switches over to my right side to work my left hand so i don't know i don't know what that means but just uh, i don't know maybe it's a, i'm a little slower or something so, so, so is that harder work for you like the transition of it no uh, i can't really remember I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe i'm just slow in school is all <laughs> good job i'm not in school anymore and i'm a, I'm a self-made man in my entrepreneurial <laughs> so, so just going back to what you mentioned earlier with uh, your father was a uh, football coach wasn't he uh, he was a football player, Gavin Peacock. Player. Yeah, Gavin Peacock. Uh, he played for Chelsea, Newcastle, Charlton, Gillingham, um, lots of different teams. My granddad too played uh, for Charlton and uh, and managed them and coached them, and he played over five hundred games for them. So, big time uh, legend. From my granddad Keith yeah. Peacock. Did Did you go and support them when he was younger? Yeah, yeah. We played and stuff. I wish I, I wish I was. Uh, I wish I was older. I could respect it more now. When I was younger, I was I wasn't really interested. But my dad was playing for like Chelsea and and then QPR and oh man, and now I'd be like, this is just incredible because I have vague memories of going down to the ground and you know I get to go. My dad's taken me to see Jose Mourinho before the game. I've I've met I've met everyone you can imagine. John Terry's getting a massage. You know I, I'm shaking hands with John Terry. Uh, Jose Mourinho gave me a slap around the face, like on the ears, like before he went out. I mean, so many great memories. But I, Ronaldinho before a big inter inter club match. Um, I don't know, man. There's, there's so many good memories. I wish I was younger or oh, older when when older to appreciate it more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But who was your favourite football player? Oh, favourite football player. I loved John Terry because I was a centre back as well, and my dad made me play like John Terry. So I've, I've watched John Terry. And funny enough, John Terry was on the sidelines as a ball boy when my dad was playing. He mentions oh, that in, a, in a, a recent interview, which is just cool. Cool story. Yeah. Yeah. Just going back to um, your, your other fight stuff. I saw, um, did you do a documentary as well for the TV? I've done, done a few different documentaries. Like what one? What one? Uh, um, I saw one with... with, with I saw one we used with Steve Gladstone. That one. Yeah, that's the Sport Bible one. Yeah, it was a short Bible, Bible. seven-minute documentary. So, what was that filmed on? Was that filmed for TV? Uh, it was just for the, the the Sport Bible news outlet, like the Bad right. Bible. Okay. okay, and what they just followed you around for like a day or something? Yeah, they hired a cameraman, followed me around uh, Ireland and England, leading up to my uh, my last fight, which was thirteen months ago, almost. Well, twelve months ago, thirteen. By the time my next fight rolls around, so so what have you got planned for the future? Is there any fights lined up for the future? Or... Yeah, I'm fighting in three weeks in uh, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, yep. three time, three weeks today or tomorrow. Um, Who, who's your opponent for that one? Caleb Hunter. He's from uh, North Carolina. A very tall guy. I think he's like six two or something. Um, very long and uh, loves to clinch. We'll see. Maybe he comes out with something else, but loves to hug you. How has your training been going up to this fight? It's been fantastic. I feel yeah. phenomenal. I'm in great shape. Uh, my team is just top class. They push me all the time. 
Um, so I'm, I'm in great shape. I've got a good plan and uh, I'm coming to look for the finish again. It'll be a tough fight, but uh, every man's got a breaking point. It's, um, so obviously, we are in Canada. Is there a lockdown over there at the minute, like the UK, or is that... Yeah, there's like on and off lockdown. And lockdown. Shut down, open up, shut down. Obviously, we can't see family sometimes and that, but... Yeah. Uh, how have you been finding that, the lockdown? Like mentally and physically? Bunch of rubbish, if you ask me. But, <laughs> but let's, not, yeah. let's not get into that. Everyone's got all sorts of opinions. But, uh, yeah, um, yeah it's, been, it's been a little tough, like... You know, not seeing family and, and you know, the restrictions of the business and stuff like that. It's been hard. Yeah. And has it affected the business for like customers and stuff? Or? Oh, big time. We've been closed down for, I think, out of 12 months, we've been closed down for, or had restrictions for eight of them. Like, that's crazy. Like, you wouldn't think that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's bad, really, because a lot of businesses could fold because of that. Oh, lots of them have already folded, 100%. Yeah. Is, is there any words of advice you could give to any sort of... Uh, younger people or people that want to go down a sort of Muay Thai route or people with other disabilities that you can think you can help? Sure. I think like uh, surround yourself with good people and a good team. If you don't have that, it's a long, it's a long journey. It'll be a, it'll be a really hard one for you. The right people around you, the right coaches, the right family, you know, positive people is going to help you. And then perseverance and consistency is the, is the keys to, to hard work and to, to making it in Muay Thai. Uh, Jake, have you ever had most of the worst injury you've had in your fight or training career? You know what? I, thankfully, right now, I thank God for this. I don't have too many bad injuries um, and haven't had. I've had a couple issues with my knee that have been scary, but no, it's been fine. And then the other week, I was running and smashed my big toe. It was so bad, mate. I thought I'd broken it to pieces. It's, it's making a good recovery, though. So we're, we're good. <laughs> it, it must be as you get older, you start getting more injuries. That's it. <laughs> like me. I'm only 27, though, so let's hope it doesn't get much worse. No, that's right. Uh, I, I think that's about it for us, really, Jake. We're to tie it up there, unless you want to say anything else. No, I think that's everything. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks Thanks for coming, Jake. Um, just before we go, we've just got a few messages from a few fighters we'd like to, like to show you. Hi Jake, this is David. Uh, if I had a hat, I would tip it off to you, sir. Uh, well done, sir. Well done. Liking uh, the videos I've seen in you fighting, uh, just keep on doing what you're doing. It's very inspirational. Uh, I know Muay Thai is, is hard in itself already. Uh, words of wisdom, what I could give to you would be just enjoy your fighting career. Enjoy the ups, enjoy the downs and just keep on doing what you're doing. You're, you're an inspiration. Bye. Hello, Jay. I've seen your fights. Uh, I'm very impressed. Good luck in the future with your career. And remember, it's not the size of the, the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog. Jay, amazing record so far. Great to see you doing what you're doing. You are the type of guy that splits the word impossible into I'm possible. And I'm sure there's a lot of people watching you out there thinking, you know what, there's no excuses stopping me doing what I want to do in life and achieving my goals. We're all watching you, mate. Refuse to lose. Us. Hi, Jake. Uh, this is Sandy Holt uh, from Bolton. And I just want to say, wow, absolutely amazing what can be achieved. And you've just proved it. Love watching your videos, seeing what you're doing. Absolutely inspirational. Uh, to say the least. Just keep doing what you're doing, keep smashing it, and uh, good luck for the future. Oosh. <laughs> nice one, Jake. <laughs> Hi, Jake. Congratulations on your career so far. You've had four fights, four wins with two KOs. That's pretty amazing. You're definitely an inspiration to me, inspiration to all generations. So keep up the great work and uh, good luck for the future. Hi Jake, I'm Stav the Crazy Bear Conolo, uh, MMA fighter, and I just wanted to say that I've watched some of your fight footage and I'm really impressed. You, you throw some great combinations, great technique, and you really come and you really bring it, which is, which is, which is super impressive. I um, just wanted to say that I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people throughout your promising career, and I, I know that you'll continue, continue to do so. Just make sure that throughout your journey that you, that you enjoy it, and embrace the grind, okay, mate? Have a good one.